Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyiati a'malina. Man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu. Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lahu wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Uusikum wa iyyaya awlan bittaqullah faqad faza almuttaqun. Dear brother and sister, Alhamdulillah, all praise due to Allah. And may Allah make us among the people who are righteous, the people who want to do the right thing, say the right word, and also we want to have the right intention in whatever we do. Insha'Allah, I'm trying to remind myself every morning, every evening about who am I, and also I would like to share this kind of feeling with all of you who are following this program. It is very important for us to remind each other and always remind everybody the importance of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are going to lose our identity if we don't remember Allah. Now, every morning I would like to start my day with the remembrance of Allah by reciting the zikir. And I hope all of you will also try to follow me to recite this zikir. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad Kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim Innaka hamidun majid Allahumma bika asbahna Wa bika amsayna Wa bika nahya Wa bika namut Wa ilayka nushur Raditu billahi rabba Wa bil islami dina Wa bi muhammadin nabiyya This is the morning zikir In the evening you just Change the word from Allahumma bika asbahna and then wa amsayna to Allahumma bika amsayna. In the evening, you begin with Allahumma bika amsayna wa bika asbahna raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami dina wa bi muhammadin nabiyya. And also the dua is good to end with Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azab al-nar. Brothers and sisters, this azkar is a very simple azkar. I think in two, three minutes you can finish the recitation. You'll be able to finish the recitation of the morning and the evening azkar. Now, the reason I like to remind myself and all of us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every morning, every evening, so that Allah will remember us, so that we'll be blessed by Him, we'll be protected by Him, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our good deeds. Amen. Now today I'd like to discuss about a topic that everybody want to be somebody. Every one of us want to be somebody, if possible. We want to be respected. We want to be a leader. We want to be somebody important, not just a human, we want to be somebody who is beneficial to others. Because that's what Allah and the Prophet want us to be a better person. And I believe everyone has the intention to be a better person, to be a successful person. Whether you want to be a businessman, you want to be a successful businessman. If you want to be a student, you want to be a good student. You want to be a doctor, you want to be a well-known doctor. If you want to be an engineer, you want to be a well known, acknowledged engineer, and so on. Now we believe that we always want to be the best. And Allah also wants us to be the best. And our Prophet Muhammad always remind his ummah to be the best ummah. Now how to be the best? All of us want to be the best, so we have to work towards the best. Now Islam gives us a very clear guideline. There are nine, nine sifat, nine characteristics that is very important for every one of us who want to be the best to have. And the nine are, number one, al-ikhlas. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us the important and also the power of ikhlas. Everything that Allah and the Prophet want us to do, there is a power in it. The strength, energy, inshaAllah. Now, the first thing is ikhlas. Everything is on our intention. 
our intention is very, very important to look into. And of course, when we talk about intention, we are talking about what is hidden inside our body, in our heart. Not just the heart, but in the heart. Where our Prophet also remind us by saying, all the children of Adam have a piece of flesh in the body. Now, if that piece of flesh is good, positive, clean and pure, then the whole body becomes good. Your mind, your thinking, your seeing, your hearing, your speech, your action, everything becomes good and everything becomes positive. But when that piece of flesh is corrupted, is bad, everything turns negative. What is that piece? Al-Qalb, the heart. Our heart is very, very important. And today I'm sharing with you something that is from my heart. So it's a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Brothers and sisters, it's the Islamic guideline, number one, Allah wants us to be sincere. And sincerity in Islam is al-ikhlas fi sirri wal alaniya. Sincerity in Islam is al-ikhlas fi sirri wal alaniya. You must always make sure that your sincerity is not just in front of the people, but also when you are alone. Openly and secret. Openly, that means you must prove to the people that whatever you say, whatever you do, it really comes from the sincere heart. And of course, after that, we must always remind ourselves to be sincere. Because sincerity is the most powerful element in whatever we do. Because Allah will value whatever we do based on our sincerity. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَقُدِّينَ You are not commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except to worship Him sincerely and follow His deen sincerely. Whatever Allah wants us to do. Salah, praying, fasting, giving sadaqah, doing good things, seeking knowledge, every single thing that we do, we do out of sincerity. Ibtigai wajhillah. To seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To please Him, like what we always say, Rodi to billahi rabba. Yeah, we are here to please Allah because we feel so blessed because Allah has allowed us to worship Him directly without going through any medium. The true God is a great netma. Now, when you look at this issue, Al-Ikhlas, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam always remind his Ummah to take care of their intention. Even the little that we do, but if the intention is purely for Allah, Alhamdulillah. Now, a lot of people are not sure about this word Ikhlas. No, they thought that Ikhlas is something that you can keep on mentioning it. You can write it down. This is donated by so-and-so, Ikhlas. No, no. Actually, Ikhlas is something that no one knows except you and Allah. Now, the Satan, our number one enemy, has admitted to Allah that he will try his best to misguide all of us. And he said to Allah, accept those who are sincere to Allah. Accept the servant of Allah who are sincere to Allah. Can you imagine the power of sincerity? That even our number one enemy, the greatest enemy to mankind, shaitan, devil, he said, I cannot misguide and influence the people who are sincere. If our relationship with Allah is sincere, you will see whatever happened in our life will never complain to Allah. We are not going to blame Allah because we have always good thoughts because sincerity develops Hosni on good thoughts, good feelings. If our relationship with our wife or the wife to her husband is sincere, whatever happened in life, good time, bad time, we are together. Now we are not going to blame anybody because we know yeah, sincerity is very, very powerful. When you have the sincerity relationship between each other, 
you become very positive, very protective. That's how it goes. But you want to know whether how sincere you are sometimes, brother and sister? You can see. You can feel sometimes. Today, you're so close. Later on, you end up become like an enemy. Something is very wrong with your feeling. That means there is a hidden agenda in your relationship. If you love a person, you will love him or love her whether he is poor or he is rich. Inshallah. We'll see you after the short break. It is said that Christianity stands and falls at the cross. Jesus' alleged death on the cross and is rising again form the basis of Christianity. No other religion is so insecurely built around a single historical event. Join me, Arib Islam, for an in-depth investigation of the cross question. The cross question. The cross question. Only on Peace TV. Explore the facts that question the legitimacy of existing Christianity in The Cross Questioned. Tomorrow at 6 p.m. and repeat telecast at 5.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Down from here. The words of wisdom from the Prophet Ahmadillah. Praise Allah first. Achieve true wisdom through the Quran. How is the character of the Prophet Muhammad how he prayed at night? Allah loves the one who praises the praiseworthy Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you send one salah on the Prophet Allah will send upon you ten salawat. Giving up the mercy of Allah is the act of shaitan. Shaitan wants you to take in that path of evil. He wants you to keep continuing on that path of evilness. Reflect on the verses of wisdom from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Join Yusuf Idris in Revealed Wisdom every Tuesday at 4 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Dawah is the core of the message. Maliki, Hanafi, Shafi'i, or Hanbali. The difference of opinion now, people are going to say, do we have to follow, do we not have to follow? Ask the people who have knowledge. Biggest problem is with the blind followers of imams of the wrong path. Muslims need to be broad-minded in this respect. Whatever comes from the heart reaches the heart. Nowadays, people will ask you, is this hadith in Bukhari or Muslim? Who is your Lord? Who is your prophet? And what is your religion? How do we understand this in the light of Aqidah? Grasp the basics of belief from the scholars in Islamic viewpoint. Next on Peace TV. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, we did discuss about the importance to make sure that our intention, our feeling is always sincere for each other. Especially whatever we do for the sake of Allah, we must make sure that we are really doing for the sake of Allah. And then when we have relationship with anybody, make sure that our relationship is very sincere. Our word is very sincere. And then, as a leader, if you are very sincere in your leadership, you are not going to misuse your power. Now, power corrupts something. Power can help us and power also can destroy us. We want to eat some supplement that has power powerful supplement to keep our body as strong and to build a strong immunity in our body. The immunity in the body is important. We want to have a very good immunity in our body. Now the same goes to, we want to have a powerful mind. Now powerful mind always comes with powerful knowledge. The most powerful knowledge 
that no one can challenge is the knowledge of Allah. Whatever Allah said in His book, everything is the truth. You don't have any doubts. You don't have to have any doubts in the word of Allah. What Allah said about the sign of this and that, everything is 100% right. It's a powerful book of Allah subhanahu wa the Quran. Now, a powerful leader is a leader who is sincere toward his people, his nation. A good leader is a leader who is prepared to serve the people. If we want people to serve us, then we fail to be a leader. So if you want to be a good leader, make sure that you have the sincerity you are here to serve them. Like how you always say to them before you were elected. I'm here for you. I'm here for the people. I'm here for the country. We hope that this really what you mean from your heart, not just what is on your lips, but it's really come from the heart. Now, the same thing go to a leader or a businessman. If you want to be a very successful businessman, you must be sincere in your dealing. It's very powerful. Now, when you are sincere in your dealing and your client, the people who do business with you, can accept you, they have acknowledged, they have recognized your sincerity, inshallah. You see, in whatever we do, we look for long term, not short term, brother and sister. Our life, we should prepare not only for 10 years ahead, 20 years ahead, we should prepare our life until the hereafter. We should always prepare yet for the everlasting life. That's how we should plan our life. So to do all these things, if you want to be a successful businessman, make sure that you are sincere in your dealing. Whatever you say about your product, you must be sincere. And sincerity always comes with knowledge. Because without the right knowledge, you don't even know what is sincerity. It's easy to say it, but it's not easy to understand except people of knowledge. They will know. Now, everybody will be exposed to some kind of trial. Satan will not leave us alone. He will put some feeling so that our sincerity will be corrupted sometimes. So we must always remind ourselves. By remembering Allah, inshallah, brother and sister, by remembering Allah, we can maintain our sincerity. That is number one. Number two, to be a successful leader or a businessman or a person, male or female, you also must act justly, be fair. Must be fair in whatever situation you are in. Good time, bad time, when you are angry, you still must make sure that justice prevails. In the Quran, you come across many verses. And one of the words that every Jumaat, all the great Imam, the Khatib, will give you an ayah of Allah to remind all of us in the second khutbah the importance of be just and fair. Inna Allah ya'amulu bil adlil wa ihsan. They always quote this ayah. Indeed, Allah has commanded us to be just, to be fair, not only to be just and fair, also to have ihsan. Is there a difference between just fairness and ihsan? Yes. Just, just an example, a slap for a slap, a word for a word, a punch for a punch, a kick for a kick. But ihsan is more than that. People slap you, you can slap them. To be fair, a slap for a slap. But you don't do that. You just you know, forgive them. Alhamdulillah. That is ihsan. That means your response is always better than what they have done to you. And also the Prophet reminds us, fairness is very important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminds us how to be fair. In case as leader, as parent, as employer, you may encounter a lot of complaint among your staff, among your people, even among children, among friends. 
They may have some quarrel, dispute, argument. Now they come to you and ask you to judge them. Normally, somebody will come to you first, not both parties. One party will approach you first and explain to you from their side of story. So and so, this is what happened, this is what they say. Now, how can you show justice and fairness to all of them? And that's why Allah said, Ya ayuhallazina amanu in ja'akum fasikum binaba'in fatabayyanu fatabayyanu Or you who believe in Allah, if anyone will come to you bringing some complaint, bringing some tales, telling you about somebody, and if you want to be the middle person, if you want, if you do not want to be the middle person, then you just, you know, may Allah guide off you. I'm sorry, I can't help you. I just want you all to try your best to reconcile. If the general advice. But if you really want to get involved, to be a good leader, a good judge, a good guy, a good friend, you must not be biased. You must not take side. If somebody complain to you about another person and they want you to help them to solve this problem, you just listen from one ear and then you got to listen from the other ear, from the other side. You need to have bayan. You need to have more time. Don't pass any judgment. Make any conclusion just from hearing one party. No. Even husband and wife. Maybe your daughter is having a problem uh, with her son-in-law, with her husband. Now they are coming home and complain to you how bad their husband is. So what should you do? You condemn your son-in-law and you are starting to pass judgment to him. This is just a word, whisper. Maybe what your daughter say is true. And maybe she must have added some spices yeah, in her word and make it taste Sometimes good, sometimes if you put too much spices, then it becomes bitter. Now you look at the Quran as a guideline. He said, if you want to get involved in the argument or the dispute between any group, make sure that you are fair to all of them. Listen from A group and also listen from the B group. Then only you will have a better idea, a better vision, feeling and understand their problem. Maybe both parties are right, only they use different approach at different times that cause some misunderstanding. Maybe both are wrong, and maybe one is right and one is wrong. So how do you judge them? You judge them with Allah's judgment. Because you know, being human, we may not be fair to ourselves sometimes. So you must make sure that justice prevails in any cause. You are not supposed to sacrifice justice for anybody because Islam commands us to be just. So a good leader, a good employer, a good person, they are always just whether they are in anger or not. Whether you are in a bad mood or a good mood, you must make sure that you don't sacrifice justice. And number three, you must always be moderate in your spending. Whatever you want to plan, what kind of project you want to do, what kind of business you want to do, make sure you are well prepared. Make sure you balance everything. You value everything before you get involved. Sometimes, there are days that we are in a good time, we have all the money with us, but you must plan properly for any kind of investment, how to make use of the wealth that Allah has given us. If you don't plan it properly, brother and sister, you always plan it. You are not careful. You are not being moderate. We are worried that you will regret. When you are rich also, you must not be spendthrift. And even when you are poor, we all must remember that the Prophet did said that one of the people that Allah do not want to see them in the Day of Judgment is a poor man who is arrogant. There are people who are poor and they're still arrogant. So 
even you are poor, you must plan. It's not said that when you are poor, that means you cannot plan anything. You still have the right to plan for your future. A lot of people begin their life as a poor person, but later on because they organize themselves, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them a lot of blessing and they become better off. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and to have a class to be just and also to be moderate in whatever we do, our eating, our spending, in whatever we do. Amin ya Rabbul Alamin. Wa bilai tawfiqi. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Somebody has all the material needs at their disposal, yes. and they're still unhappy. That's when we come in as Muslims to give them uh, the message of Islam. This is the point. Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid. The highest income in the face of this earth is in a country called Sweden. The highest suicide. Where? Sweden. Where? Sweden. Sweden. Shun immorality. Seek forgiveness. Spread righteousness. The hearts of...